So, um, I didn't expect my first dedicated Classic Who video to be a review of Season 17, especially since it's just such a random season to review, but... It's shit! What a twat! <laughs> yeah, don't worry, this video will be edited like normal soon, so you won't have to stare at my hideously awful face, and what I've done to my hair. I just wanted a preference why this video's being made in the first place, because it's not like this is the first Classic Who season I've seen fully. I've seen plenty. I've seen season 12, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26 fully, and every story except one in season 7, 14, and 20. But this is the first season I'd seen fully in the Graham Williams era. Now this era gets a lot of shit throughout the fandom, and I was hoping that this was unwarranted, because if you really think about it, Doctor Who was thriving in the 70s. It only really started to decline once Tom left. I mean, surely it wasn't just Tom and whichever companion he was with carrying an entire season, right? Wrong. Though, to be honest, Tom Baker is fantastic in all of these stories except one, and he does carry pretty much the whole season. And so does Romana too. She's pretty good. What, I meant Romana, like, two, not Romana. But I didn't think they'd be carrying the whole season so hard. But they are. Luckily, besides that smug, shit-eating dog, this TARDIS team is really, really good. We still can't save this, though. <laughs> Destiny of the Daleks is the only story I've had to rewatch for this video, as it was one of the first classic Who stories I'd ever seen, and I remember on my first viewing, I thought it was alright. Upon later reflection, I thought it was mediocre, and upon full rewatch, I now realise how fucking shit it is. Now admittedly, it does start strong with a slow build of mystery, where the Doctor and Romana are, and what the creatures are on this planet. They sure as shit didn't give us any clues as to what it could be. If only they would have left some sort of clue! But the second the first part is over, it's an absolute schlog to get through the story. First of all, these robots, Mavellans, are an absolute joke. I don't even know how it's scientifically possible to look that stupid, over the top, and camp, but still be boring. And they make this story so annoying to sit through, this story feels like such a watered down, let's bring back some of the great moments from Genesis because Genesis is really good, right? And it just doesn't work. The Daleks in this story, despite being used quite seriously and having a lot of threatening moments, are robots. Yes, in this story, the Daleks are robots. That stupid detail makes this story a lot like Revenge of the Cybermen, in a lot of ways, and that's not a good thing. They both fail their main villain significantly and ruin their reputation. Though, to be fair, the Daleks' reputation had been a joke since the chase in 1964, so... But yeah, Destiny. Also, Davros is oddly terrible in this story. Seriously, I know that despite having the same mask, there's a different guy playing Davros in the story, and he's really bad. He makes Davros out to be really incompetent, and is extremely easily defeated. This story is a schlog, but at least Thor and Romana are really good. Like, considering this is Romana 2's first story, she's great, and Lala Ward plays the role excellently, but neither of them can save this piece of shit. Did I mention... There's a scene... where the, the Doctor, he, um... He kills a Dalek... by throwing his hat on the eye. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to criticize City of Death, you fucking egg. Don't be ridiculous.
City of Death is a really good story. The plot is really well written and thought out, and it does seem like something an alien would genuinely come up with, and it's actually aged quite well. And this just proves what Doctor Who was capable of, even back when, when they just got given some fucking money. And this is one of Tom Baker's best comedic performances as the Doctor, and even if this story was absolute ass, he carries the entire thing. While Romana doesn't really get much to do here, Duggan is one of the best classic Who characters, and I really do mean that, especially considering he's only one time. New Who is really, well, was really good at making random side characters and one time characters likeable and interesting. Classic Who? <laughs> it's fucking terrible at this, but Duggan is honestly a top tier companion level, and it's a shame he wasn't an 80s companion for 5 or 6. Because he could have made their TARDIS teams much better, and add some much needed comedy on an 80s Doctor Who. My closest thing to an issue I have with this story is, because it's classic Who, obviously it has to have one part of absolute filler, and that's what the first part is. Like, it's literally just the Doctor and Romana walking around Paris. And there is way too many long shots of the Doctor or someone just running around in Paris, like, come on, we get it, you actually went somewhere outside of walking distance for once. And the resolution to this episode is just Duggan punching the alien and then boom, problem solved. It's a bit anticlimactic, but the amount of brilliance in the story really makes up for it. And this, and it's not on the level of the anticlimax in Destiny. Ugh. <laughs> The Creature from the Pit is definitely the most forgettable story of this season, and outside of one scene in particular, you aren't missing anything with this story. Okay, so basically the story is the Doctor and Romana arrive on this planet, only for the Doctor to get attacked by some balls, and by the part one cliffhanger he jumps down a hole, and the rest of the three parts are spent arguing about needing metal, dealing with this slug thing in the pit, and being an over the top cheese fest. And yes, this is the story where Baker has to suck on a massive green alien tit. That infamously terrible scene pretty much sums up this entire story. Everything else in it is either equally or if not more stupid. I mean, at least the Doctor and Romana are still good, but... That can be said about all of these stories except for one. But we'll get to that. Right now. After his previous experience, the Doctor approached the thing with the utmost caution and thoughtfully sucked it off. No, I'm not sure about that one. I don't know if that checks out. Nightmare of Eden, in terms of rewatchability, is definitely the worst story of this season. Now, I honestly think that this story is one of the worst this one is just trope bingo for classic Who, and trope bingo for what bad episodes of Doctor Who can be. I can't remember word for word what I said, but I'm pretty sure what I said was, the worst thing an episode of Doctor Who can be is dull, boring, lazy, or uninspired. Well, something along those lines. I make a lot of videos, I can't remember where everything is. And this episode is all three. Boring? This episode is an absolute schlog to get through. The fucking dog has more plot relevance than he should in this story, and the pace is even slower than usual, and most of the runtime is just spent looking at awful effects. Uninspired? This story reads like so many others. It's an insane, wacky scientist character with an annoying accent. You literally had that two stories ago. Another Starliner story. Never seen one of those before. Predictable villain and plot, yeah, that goes for the majority, and lazy. Everything about this story feels so lazy. The main cast in this episode so obviously don't give a shit. Tom looks like he's somewhere else or drunk in most of this story. To be honest, while Tom Baker was the most lightning in the bottle perfect casting for the Doctor ever, I feel like with him being the Doctor, not much acting was really needed because he was basically just being himself. Which, for the most part, is a good thing, because Tom Baker is a wonderful, interesting, unique person. But it just makes it so incredibly obvious when he doesn't give a shit about what he's been given. Hence, Season 18, hence this story. 
This story is the only story this season where Tom seems like he doesn't care, and this is almost a bad performance on his half. Everybody gangster until Tom Baker barely bothers to put in any jokes. And the production on this episode, the laziness continues here. Seriously, even for 70s Doctor Who, this looks terrible, especially when you look at the fucking mandrill. How did these even make it into an episode without somebody getting fired? I honestly don't understand why this abysmal story isn't talked about as much. It's honestly a failure on the same level as some of Davison's worst stories. And that's saying a lot. The Horns of Naimon is fucking hilarious cheese and I love it with all my heart's content. Seriously, this story is absolutely fucking ridiculous cheese shite and I adore it. Everything in this story is just... so terrible. Off the top of my head, ignoring the plot for a second, there's literally a scene where the Doctor sends Romana away into the place with all the monsters and only notices she's gone once he sent the fucking pod away. He didn't think to check if she was in there or not. It's just so stupid. Now every episode of Classic Who has an embarrassing moment in it because, boiled down, Classic Who is just inherently shit. But take all those bad moments from every story. Take Daleks fighting Frankenstein, take the cliffhanger to Time of the Rani, take the Doctor hanging himself off a cliff for no reason, take all the stupid shit in at least one Classic Who story, cram it together into four parts, then you get the Horns of Naimon. A seriously embarrassing bit of television, definitely entertaining, but so, so embarrassing. And I haven't even talked about Soul Deed yet. Holy shit. The guy who plays Soul Deed is so enjoyable to watch in this story. He's absolutely terrible in every possible way. It's a next level performance of shit. This is honestly one of the most cheesy, phoned in, hammy performances I've seen in my life and I love it. One thing I will commend Classic Who for is usually when it has bad acting in it, it's fucking hysterical. It's not just the embodiment of cringe and suffering like this disease of a master. The Naimon themselves are crap villains, also with their, um, <clears throat> laser horns shooting shit? Yeah, no. There was at least a decent idea behind this story, but the execution and everything in it is just bad. But at least Tom Baker was still trying at this point. Season 17 is the last season where Tom gave a shit about what he was doing. So to think that this story is his last fully good performance as the Doctor is quite sad to see. But then again, he was probably great in Sharda, but I haven't seen it and IMDB doesn't count it as part of season 17. Season 17. So... So that was my sort of mini season 17 review. It's not as good as the reviews that we're accustomed to by my standards because they're so high but but yeah it was just i was gonna start doing classic who retrospectives this year but re-watching classic who is so boring especially like davison's era which is just so shit anyways tell me in the comments below what you think of season seven you you think of season seven you you think of season 17 and um yeah let me know if there's any seasons in particular out of the ones i listed earlier that you'd like to hear my thoughts on or anything along those lines also happy 87th birthday to tom baker because that's when this is being filmed bite my shiny metal ass <laughs> but this is the <laughs> that looks so stupid.